Hello, I'm Harlan. And today we're going to be talking about a whistle blower. A whistle blower, they used to call them snitches or informants. But a man named Ralph Nader coined the phrase back in the 70s, and they called them whistle blowers. And like the old umpire used to blow his whistle, well, they made an infraction on the field or something, and something was wrong. So whistleblowers do a great service. Just like this whistleblower now, Snowden, he's in Russia now. He got all the information, and he told the European countries where uh, America had been spying on them at the United Nations, and when they come over here, they put bugs in their rooms and in their computers, and America spies on everybody. So he does a service. Now they, they don't like America. They're watching them. They don't let their ambassadors say nothing around them because... They do not want them to find the information that's private to them, see? So whistleblowers do a great service. Now, as Holy Ghost people are whistleblowers. We're blowing the trumpet. We're prophesying. We're telling the truth. Now, think about how much power the Bible worshippers has lost lately. I've been on about three years. They've lost a lot of power, see? The uh, men marrying men, women marrying women. And see, their power, their Bible's lost its holiness. It's lost its power because... See, I'm a country boy, like from the mountains. And when you see a man marrying a man, you think, when I when I seen a chickens out in the yard and I seen two roosters, if you just had two roosters, you ain't going to get no children and you ain't going to get no eggs. So it don't make sense to a country boy for a man to marry a man or a woman to marry a woman. You ain't going to get nothing, you see. That ain't the way God made it. So they've lost power, especially the Catholics. They never did want men marrying men and and even though they're pedophiles, most of them. But anyway, they're, lo they're losing their power. Now, here's the reason why. The Bible is an idol. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a thing that controls people. You go to church because this book says so. You pay tithes because this book says so. You go into all the world because this book says so. And that means it's, you're controlled by that book. Okay, now, we're whistleblowers. That's Holy Ghost people. The Bible is the mark of the beast. We've proved that King James, sixth out of the house of Stuart, he's a printed, he was born in 1566, he printed 66 books, and you carry it in your hand or you got it memorized in your head. And people don't want to be controlled by an idol, so they're losing power. The Bible worshipers are losing power. Now, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are old covenant. That's just a continuation of the old covenant. Jesus, until he shed his blood, there was no New Testament. So he said, this is the blood of the New Testament. So there is no New Testament till Jesus shed his blood. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then they can't answer this question. Remember, I put this question to them for about a year. It drove Bible worshipers up the wall. When did the New Testament begin? They can't say. If they say it started with Matthew, then they know they're liars. And then if they say by the blood of Jesus, when it did start on Mount Calvary, that makes their book a liar. So they become liars, and they couldn't, they couldn't answer that question. They still can't answer the question. When you, because a writing is not a testament. It takes a testator to be a, test, a testament. Jesus is the New Testament, not a book. And I said, a 2,000-year-old book. See, I said, you mean to tell me the Word of God is a 2,000-year-old book? I said, your God hadn't spoken in 2,000 years. This drives Bible, Bible worships up the wall. I'm a whistleblower. They say, 2,000-year-old book, God ain't spoke in 2,000. Who'd have a God that hadn't spoke to him in 2,000 years? That's nutty. And then they stole all these letters. Constantine sent out, see, he was the king. He sent out through all the land, got all the letters. Well, what's he doing with the letter from Paul to Timothy? Constantine was supposed to have that letter. That was to Timothy. Stealing letters that was to the saints, or he'd say, to my son Timothy. See, and people claim these words. You're not Paul's son. He didn't lay hands on you and the Holy Ghost come up on you. So you stole these letters. You see, now, people's faith today, they say, Oh, what faith are you? What church do you belong to? That's a demon because there's only one faith. And that's us Holy Ghost people has got faith. You see, the blood of Jesus Christ is what cleanses you. And God sent the Holy Ghost. You see, now, when you look at me, I don't belong to no church. I'm not a Baptist. I'm not a Catholic or a Pentecostal. I don't belong to no church. I'm not ruled by my family or friends. I don't have nobody controls me 
but the Holy Ghost. You say, I'm sanctified, set free, Holy Ghost person warning you to not be controlled by this book, or you're going to be in serious trouble. Now, today I want to tell you something that I want you to be sure and remember this. Okay. The Bible people say it's Jesus' words are spirit in their life. That's a lie. Jesus' words are not spirit in life. Jesus said, the words I speak. Now get this. Don't ever forget this. Don't ever forget this. Jesus said, the words I speak are spirit and their life. When Jesus spoke to me that he would deliver me, his word is still true today. He's always delivered me for 40, 50 years. He keeps his word. But that's the spoken word. Now, when somebody takes and writes one down in a book, then it becomes the word of the devil. You see, now, think about this. Say like Jimmy Swaggart was up here preaching out of this book. You remember he always had the Bible in his hand? Blah, 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 blah. And he's a whoremonger. Okay, now when Jimmy Swaggart was preaching out of the Bible, that was the voice of Jimmy Swaggart going over a whoremonger's heart. That voice going over a whoremonger's heart and he, I seen people after he fell, they said, I ain't never going to believe in nobody again because they thought he was the real deal. But he's a whoremonger. And this words he was speaking was the words of the devil. Now, when Jesus spoke a word, like right now, if he tells me something, that word comes out of his spirit, out of a pure heart. Jesus has a pure heart. He's without sin. When he speaks that word, he can say, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus, come out of the grave. Well, you can say them words now and they ain't no good. See, like these Bible worshipers will say these words and they don't have the Spirit of God in them. See, a spoken word has the Spirit of God in them. When you write them down, then they're not God's word. It becomes the devil's word. You see, the Satan can take and quote scriptures. Like he quoted, he offered Jesus the whole world. He quoted him scriptures. But when he's quoting the scriptures, that's his word. Never forget this. See, like I'm speaking the word to you. I'm speaking it out of my heart. I don't have no money in mind. I don't have being famous in mind. You know I'm never going to be famous with this mess. I don't have nothing in mind but pleasing Jesus. I speak truth to you out of my heart. My voice, you hear it. You can't see my voice, you hear my voice. Now if Jesus speaks to you, it's pure, it's holy, it's plain. But Satan, when he speaks to you and he uses these words and he said these words are, are holy, that's a lie. The words Jesus spoke, when he spoke them, they was holy. When they're written down, they're of the devil. Remember, this is why it's the mark of the beast. This is the mark of the beast. That's why I tear it up, to show you that it don't have no power. See, this thing is not holy. Jesus said, the words I speak, they are spirit, and they are life. You see, when you speak a word, it comes out of your heart, through your spirit, and I'm telling you the truth. I don't have no reason not to tell you the truth. I'm not a Baptist. I don't have to please nobody. I don't, in fact, I don't please nobody. But I tell you the truth right out of my heart, a pure heart, a river of living water flowing out of me, and you can hear the plain truth. Plain truth. Now, when Jesus speaks, it's a plain truth. Now, when Jimmy Swaggart was up here preaching, oh, with tears in his eyes, come to Jesus, God said in his word, that was the word of the devil. That was the devil's word. You see, they take the words they say Jesus spoke, and they speak them out of a dirty, evil, satanic heart, and it's not God. And listen, you always remember that. Only Jesus Christ, when he speaks word to you, can you have faith in it. You believe in Jesus Christ, and you have faith in his word, and he come and told me, he said, the Bible is an idol. Told me that almost 44 years ago. And I believed it. It's true. And it's still true today. He told me that. And he's told me many things. He's, he's revealed himself to me. And he is honest. Jesus is honest. Jimmy Swaggart's not honest. These pedophile priests are not honest. They'll take these words and speak these words out of this book. And it's the devil speaking them. And they'll get you in a church for 40 years, take your tithe. And then when you die, your spirit wanders around. And you'll come to me and say, help me. All these people that hate me, when they die, they come by and they say, oh, Harlan, can you help me? I said, I could have, but you didn't pay no attention. All you wanted was the flesh. You just wanted to live a, a good life. You wanted the fishes and the loaves. You wanted the Holy Book instead of the Holy Ghost. And now you're in the spirit world. And I'm telling you <coughs> that these words that I'm speaking to you, they're spirit and they're life. And God told them to me. 
So you remember these. And remember when somebody's speaking to you out of a Bible and they're saying this is the Word of God, but it's coming over a demon heart, out of a demon spirit, that's the Word of a demon. I don't care if they're quoting John 3.16. That's a devil talking to you when it's a Bible worshiper, somebody's controlled by money, controlled by a church, controlled by his family, controlled by something that you can see. That's a demon talking to you even though they got what they call the Word of God. Remember this. Remember this. And you will overcome the devil. Do not let the devil quote scriptures to you and control you. Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for your love. Thank you for these words. And I know there's some Holy Ghost people that loves you. and They don't want to be controlled with nothing but by the Holy Ghost. Gracias, Señor, por el Espíritu Santo, Señor, en el nombre de Jesús Cristo. Amen.